Welcome once again. My name is William Sinequeri, taking you through mathematics before class. Uh, if go back to where we stopped from, what the problem, subtraction, or fraction of the same denominators. Uh, when you look at the number uh, of that the numbers that were given an activity, the first one where we had subtract 11 20th from 19 20th, whereby we said, please get the bigger fraction, take away the smaller one, whereby you take 19 20th minus 11 20th. Keep the common denominator, 20, and you have 19, take away 11. Finally, this will give you a 19 minus 11. What do you get? Good. Somebody saying 8 out of 20. Did you get that one on the first question? Good. Look at the third one. What remains if 5 11 is subtracted from 9 11? Same thing. 5 11 is subtracted from 9 11. As simple as this one. We said keep the common denominator. This is none other than 11. Then subtract the numerators. 9 minus 5, what do you get? Good, somebody saying 4. And this is out of 11, and you call this 4 11th. We also had the last one of saying find a missing fraction to make this statement true. What do you subtract from 9 13th to get 2 13th? So this is the same as. 9 13th, take away 2 13th, and you shall get that missing fraction, okay? Here I said, keep the common denominator 13, then subtract the numerators, okay? So 9 take away 2, what do you get? Good, 7, and this is 7 13th. So the missing fraction here was 7 13th, please put it and see whether it will make sense. Will it? Fine, because it is a matter of getting a 9, take away 7, the answer will be 2. We said in this case, you keep just the common denominator. Maintain it until you get the answer. Okay? Now, uh, for today's lesson, it's quite different, but still it is addition of fractions. This is addition of fractions, but this time, different denominators. What we have been going through in the previous lessons, addition and subtraction of uh, fractions with the same denominators. Now, fractions uh, of different denominators, will it be the same working? Watch, okay? Assume we are going to add uh, some uh, of the simple fractions, but this time, they have different denominators. We talked about all parts of the fraction. We have whole numbers, denominators, and numerators. But here I want to see if the denominators are different. Not like the other time where we had the same denominators. Uh, for example, assume we have been told, add. This is a half plus a third. Do you observe the different denominators in this case? What is the denominator on the first example? I mean on the first fraction? It's two. When you go to the next fraction, what is the denominator? Three. Not like the other time where we had like three, three, two, two, four, four, six, six. This time they are different. How do you go about this? Look, when you go back, equivalent fractions. Do you still remember how to find the equivalent fractions for a half? Yes. Try that one and tell me. If I have a half and I want the next equivalent fraction, but this time I will look for the third equivalent fraction by using this three here. I will get the first fraction, 
then I multiply by the opposite denominator, which is the 3, do it down and up. Equivalent fraction style. Remember, we are adding. Right? Now, get the other fraction, which is a third, but multiply it by the opposite denominator to look for the second equivalent fractions, second equivalent fraction of a third. That's why I'm using the opposite here as two. So you, you multiply two here, multiply two here. And ask yourself, why am I using equivalent fraction, not any other method? I want to make sure that it takes us back to have fractions of the same denominators. I've used the equivalent fraction style so that the denominators look alike. Then it will be simple for us to move. Now, 1 times 3, what do you get? Very good, somebody is saying 3. What about 2 times 3? Somebody is saying 6. Okay? We are adding. 1 times 2. Somebody is saying 2. Very good. What about 2 times 3? 6. Have you observed anything? What have you observed on the denominators? Somebody is saying they look alike. Do you know why they look alike? It is because of the equivalent fraction uh, method I've applied. So now, after here, where do we go? We go back at from, we go back at where we started from, additional fraction with the same denominators, because it is already here. Okay? Keep the common denominator 6. What do you do to the numerators? Add them. 3 plus 2. I think things are becoming simpler. Finally, let's have the final answer. It is 3 plus 2. What do you get? 5. And you will keep the common denominator 6. Do you think you can go beyond here? No. Watch. Which method? This one will have used the equivalent fraction. When you reach P5, they will give you other methods apart from this one. It is not only the one. But for today, we are going to see how we can use equivalent fractions in additional fractions of different denominators, okay? Finally, what do you do here? Please underline your answer very well, okay? Good. Now, let me give you another example whereby we shall also observe different denominators in the given fractions. Assume you have been given to work out Work out, we have two fifths plus a half. Do you observe different denominators in this case? Two fifths, we observe that our denominator is five. This is a half, our denominator is two. Okay? Like the other way, we had two and three. Here we have five and two. How do you go about this? Using equivalent fraction. We shall have two fifths. Multiply. Look for the second equivalent fractions using the opposite. Using the opposite denominator here. This is two here. You also multiply two here. Observe those brackets. Then we add... This is a half times the opposite denominator, which is 5. Again, you also times 5. Okay? Just as we did on the other first example. So we shall have 2 times 2. This will give us 4. Correct? Then 5 times 2. What do you get? Somebody saying 10. Very good. So we shall add 1 times 5. Somebody saying 5. Then 2 times 5, 10. You will observe that whenever we apply equivalent fractions, we are looking for these fractions to have the same denominators. The way we did here, our same denominator became 6. Now our same denominator has become 10. Now here from here, go back to where we started from. Keep the common denominator 10. What do you do to the numerators? Add them very well, and 
then he will give you the final answer whereby what is four plus five? Very good. Somebody is telling us that it is nine, and you keep the common denominator as ten. And what name is given to this fraction? Nine tenths. Very good. Then you underline it. Okay? Hope this is very simple. Equivalent fractions, I think it is where we started from uh, after the types of fractions. And uh, we looked at a variety of fractions, I mean equivalent fractions of very many fractions, as you can still remember. Finally, let's have one example under addition of fractions with different denominators. If it is this one, they are saying simplify. And what are we simplifying on the third example? Somebody is giving us uh, two tenths plus three fifty. Have you observed the different denominators? Ten and five. Don't go away from equivalent fractions. Let's move. So we shall have two tenths and we multiply by the opposite denominator to get the equivalent fraction. Times five, multiply here five. Add, which is three out of five times the opposite denominator. This is none other than 10. You also multiply 10 here, okay? Don't forget this. So what do we have here? Two times five. Somebody is saying ten. What about ten times five? Very good. Somebody is giving us fifty. Plus three times ten. What do you get? Very good. Somebody is saying thirty. Out of this is automatically fifty. Same denominator. Have you also observed this one? The way you observed this one? The way you observed 66. So, what is the next step after here? Keep the common denominator 50. Okay? Let's add the numerators and see. This is 10, add 30. Okay? Now, come here. We have not finished this one, okay? Let's add 10 plus 30. What do you get? Somebody is saying 40, okay? Out of 50. If I have not remembered, we had something of this kind some time back. Do you leave that fraction there? We had it and we said it can be reduced because it is too big. How do you reduce such? If we have not forgotten, we said you can cancel the zeros. One zero on top, one zero down. Finally, you remain with your four fifth. Okay? Hope you have remembered this kind of reducing. We had it some time back. Yeah, we can reduce as long as there are zeros, we can cancel them. Okay? Thank you for watching this simple uh, lesson of uh, addition of fractions with the different denominators. And the method being used in this lesson was. Uh, equivalent fractions. Why do we apply equivalent fractions? To make sure that it brings us to the same denominators and we add, we maintain the same denominator, add the numerators and we go. Thank you so much.